Hey, Stargazers, welcome back to another episode of Skywatch Wednesday. My name is Nick. I'm a theater's manager at the Adler Planetarium in Chicago, Illinois. In today's episode, we're going to be covering all the sights in the spring sky, the stars, planets, and constellations that you can see as you head outside this spring. And I'm also going to be covering the amazing total solar eclipse that will be coming up, crossing much of North America on April 8th. Well, spring is in the air, and we see this change playing out not just in the weather, but in the night sky as well. Although the official start of spring is the night of March 19th here in Chicago, the sky above doesn't change overnight. Just like crocuses peeping up through the snow, you have a mixing of two seasons in the sky as well. The well-known winter constellation Orion is in the southwest after sunset as spring begins, and it'll be getting lower and lower each night. It'll still hang around until about late April, so you can still see it if you haven't quite gotten near fill this winter. I like to imagine Orion and the other winter constellations being chased from the sky by a well-known spring constellation, the famous lion, Leo. Leo is formed by a backwards question mark or sickle shape of stars, with the brightest of these called Regulus, the heart of the lion. Trailing behind is the body and tail of Leo, and he'll be well up in the eastern sky after sunset as spring begins. Also in the east, though a bit more northeasterly, is the well-known pattern of the Big Dipper. This is a very well-known pattern of seven stars that never goes below the horizon from mid-northern latitudes. It's part of a larger constellation called Ursa Major, the Great Bear, but you only need these seven bright stars to help find some other patterns in the sky. In fact, if you're having trouble finding Leo, you can use the bowl of the Dipper. Imagine the bowl of the Dipper is filled with liquid. Then imagine poking a hole in the bottom of the bowl, and the liquid would drip out onto the back of Leo. You can then find two other spring constellations, this time using the handle of the Dipper. Just extend the arc shape of the handle and arc to Arcturus, and then continuing that shape, you speed on to Spica. Arcturus is the brightest star in the constellation Boötes the Herdsman, or Plowman. And Spica is part of the zodiac constellation of Virgo the Maiden. Both of these are fairly low in the east later in the evening in March, but they'll be much higher and more visible as spring progresses. This season, the planetary pickings in the evening are a bit slim, but you've got a couple to look for if you time it just right. Jupiter is quite easy to spot for the first month or so of spring in the western sky after sunset. The giant planet is well past its best and brightest this time around, but it is still easily the brightest point of light in the evening sky. If you're going for a binocular or a telescopic view, the higher in the sky you can catch it, the better. The lower it gets, the more blurry the view will be, since you'll be looking through more of Earth's atmosphere. With binoculars, you should be able to make out the Galilean moons, four moons that Galileo discovered using one of the first telescopes ever made. These four moons are in constant motion around Jupiter, so you might happen to look when one or two are hidden behind Jupiter. And if you look another night, they'll be in a totally different arrangement. A backyard telescope will show more detail on Jupiter, including showing Jupiter as a distinct disk instead of a point of light. And larger scopes will begin to show the cloud bands in the atmosphere, and possibly the great red spot if it's facing Earth. Well, Mercury is also joining the view as it speeds around the Sun, and from about March 15th through the 31st, it's worth a look low in the west, about 30 to 45 minutes after sunset. Locate Jupiter, and then look below it and to the right for a point of light. You'll need a clear western horizon and a very clear sky as well to have a shot. And binoculars will definitely help while the sky is still bright. Now, you won't see any details on Mercury, even with optical aid, though you might catch a view of its phase through a telescope. Mercury never gets very far from the sun, so take this chance to see it, as it won't be back in the evening sky until summer. Well, the biggest event in the sky this spring is undoubtedly the total solar eclipse that will be crossing parts of the U.S., Canada, and Mexico on April 8th. This is the second of two eclipses, just six and a half years apart, that have crossed the United States, giving millions of people a chance to see at least a partial solar eclipse and have the option to drive to a spot to view totality in all of its glory. Cities like Austin, Dallas, Indianapolis, Cleveland, and Buffalo lie in the path of totality, the narrow path where the sun will be completely blocked by the moon. Chicago, while not in the path of totality, 
will experience over 90% of the sun being blocked. During the partial phases of the eclipse, observers must use safe, approved, protective filters to block out more than 99% of the sun's light. You should never look directly at the sun. Only during totality should solar glasses and viewers be removed when the moon is blocking all of the sun's light. Then, the magnificent solar corona, the outermost layer of the sun's atmosphere, can be seen extending millions of miles away from the sun. Bright planets and stars can be visible during totality as well, and a drop in temperature will be noticeable too. Timings will be different for every location, but in Chicago, the moon first starts to eclipse the sun at 12.51 p.m. on April 8th. The greatest extent of the eclipse in Chicago is at 2.07 p.m., with about 94% of the sun being blocked, and the moon moves off of the sun's disk at 3.22 in the afternoon. Even partial eclipses are an amazing view, and if you have a chance to see totality, it might be one of the most memorable experiences of your life. Well, that's what we've got for you this episode. Thanks, as always, for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to Adler's YouTube channel, and also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. Happy stargazing. We'll see you next time.